Well, every so often we're uh, graced with the opportunity to speak with people of fairly significant uh, power and privilege within cricket. Today is one of those days. Um, typically when you set interviews up like this, you, you make a, um, a calculation. You ask yourself, Sh- should, I, should I probably go to this person? Should, should we travel to them? Uh, or should we maybe meet in the middle? Um, or, you know, uh, are we pushing the barrel if we say, you know, let's get them to come to us? And, and today it's um, very happy to say that, you know, the, the constitutionally most powerful man person in Australian cricket, um, Mike Baird, joins us in studio on the, on the dilapidated TGC studio couch <laughs> for a chat about uh, hopefully, you know, the state of the nation in, in Australian cricket and, and global cricket as well, and uh, also your club cricket bona fides. Uh, but with that in mind, Mike Baird, welcome to the Grade Cricketer. Well, it's a, it's an honour, and I don't think there's um, anyone in Australian cricket that wouldn't want to come to this bunker. So no, there's, there's so heaps, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've upset quite a few people over the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it feels, it feels a privilege to be here, <laughs> see what happens behind the scenes. Um, mm. So, no, look forward to it. What are your early impressions of, of what you've seen behind the scenes? Well, I mean, it's, it pretty much matches what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Style, yeah. sophistication. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how yeah, most yeah, people would describe it. A bit yeah. of humour around yeah. the place. So, yeah. no, 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 very be. impressive. Yeah. Um, you you have club cricket bona fides, uh, <laughs> and you know a lot, lot of like a lot of serious administrators will want to be keen to get that out there, just to you know to show the ma- <laughs> the masses that they know the game. Um, so for you, it's Camaray Cricket Club. Uh, I have to say, like grade cricketers would look down on that level. Yeah. Possibly even, you know, do you use wheelie bins for stumps? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But give us the elevator pitch <laughs> of your club career. Um, you know, look, I loved uh, cricket and uh, it was a big part of my life. Um, you know, early on, uh, I lived in America, so I played baseball. And um, so my batting kind of more resembled a baseball swing okay. than, than mm. a cricket swing. So I didn't have the traditional technique. Mm. Uh, I had a bit of hand-eye. And uh, I had a decent arm, and so uh, it came together in cricket. And I played, yeah, a range of places. I mean, I played at um, actually uh, Kissing Point uh, Cricket Club, part of the Hornsey Karingai Cricket Association. Yep. Um, played a couple of years there um, at the Durham Shield, the under 19s. Um, ended up at uh, Camaray, um, and also Epping, Epping Shires. I played. Oh, so you played Shires? Okay. Yeah. So, so not quite. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, no, no. great. Yeah. I don't know, look, I know you look down look on down Shires, of course. Well, yeah. yeah, a lot of good people right, yeah. there, but but the Shires, yeah. the, the Shires <laughs> group kind of view themselves as great cricketers that don't have yeah. the time to do the training. I think, indeed, I think yeah. some of them get paid as well, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, maybe there's a bit of coin I, looking I, around. I didn't see that. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've only ever heard of it too. But anyway, there's a lot of pokies winnings. I think, yeah, yeah. But it's what's your position on that? It was, it was. <laughs> let that go. I, 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 um, I so I played many years, about ten years, um, sort of post school, and um, yeah, many ups and downs, and um, sort of great moments and terrible moments. But um, yeah, no, big part of my life. Uh, I also spent a year in Canada. I studied at um, University of British Columbia, and I played for the Burrard Cricket Club for a year. And, nice. And Canada and cricket. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was amazing, actually. Yeah. It was um, – in fact, I, I played at Stanley Park, and uh, at Stanley Park there's this beautiful clubhouse, and up there there's a letter uh, from Don Bradman oh. um, to the club saying that it was his most favourite cricket ground in the world, or picturesque, maybe the most picturesque, okay. and it was because it's looked out across Vancouver Harbour and then there were snow-capped peeps. Beautiful. So, um, yeah, that was probably my most successful year of cricket. You know, um, my mates back home were – um, skeptical, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an incredible team. It was multicultural. Had a Mor- Moroccan wicketkeeper. Um, we had um, a beautiful um, Indian uh, batsman number three, Ravi. Um, had uh, Leela Hull from England that was an opening bowler with me. So there was and and a West Indian captain, um, Big Dave. Cool. Oh, um, so that, that that combination, that multicultural kind of connection, love of cricket, bringing it together was you know, was special. So it's yeah, it'd been a big part of my life. Are you, are you playing a mashing in Canada, or are you playing a turf wickets? Uh, no, Astro. Astro, yeah, yeah. Astro. Yeah, okay. it was what was okay. Astro. So, um, yeah. So, so Bradman's turned up to this ground, and he's seen Astro, and he said, "This is the most picturesque ground." Well, I think he, from what I could see, he played on it. You know, so I think he, I How think he, he played. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know. 
the history of it, but you know, he certainly played up there. I'm going to research that. Yeah, yeah. Have a look. Brad Bradman in Canada yeah, on have an a Astro look. deck. Yeah, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the I'm sure he stuff. got runs. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Uh, so, so just for background for those who wouldn't know, perhaps listening overseas, I mean, you are, you are the former Premier of New South Wales. Uh, th- that is that is some serious halls of power stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, just for the for for the uninitiated, uh, and you know it's always it's always fun to interrogate the um, relationship of politicians with sport. You know, some people have come a cropper are trying to kind of um, connect themselves to sport or be involved in media ops involving sport, if you know what I mean. But I look at this. I'm going to show this picture in a second. I, I look at this. Uh, this picture of you from a good weekend uh, profile on you after assuming the CA chairship, and uh, this is uh, we'll, we'll get it up on the YouTube as well. But um, so that, that's, that's you there. You've seen this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you just listen to the pod, um, Mike Baird is you, you. You are you are rocking back and cr- like this is a photo shoot. Like a, you, you would have been in a studio for this. Yeah, you are rocking back and crashing. A ball just forward of point, uh, hypothetically. There's a lot through of the with, a, with a suit on, and you, and you. I also know. No, no, no past mid wicket, I think, isn't it? Oh well, it's interesting. Oh, so you actually have quite an open stance, then, is what I'm saying. I mean, yes. yeah, that that. See, for me, you've got a side on stance. You, you're going forward of point, but you, you're saying you're sort of front on here and you're hitting <laughs> to the leg side. I mean, either way, <laughs> um, you've taken the long handle as well. You're in a suit. Your your eyes are narrowed. Uh, is that is. Is that you know the um, the approach you're taking to the chairship at uh, Cricket Australia as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I think um, well, I mean I think if you're doing something, you know, do it well, go go all in, mm. you know, don't uh, don't back away from it. And no, I, look, I think the um, the chairship is more yes. I mean you're you're looking for all the opportunities, um, so it's. Not just a defensive game; it's offensive, and you know I don't think cricket has faced anything like the opportunities at the moment. Um, but before you grab those, you have to make sure that you know there's good relationships, good foundations, and everyone's kind of working as one. You know, so I think that's where we've done well in the past uh, sort of twelve months, in particular, where we've come together much more uh, across the, the Australian cricket system and started to kind of work on these unbelievable opportunities that are before us. So. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think it's unprecedented what faces us, and you know, whether it be an, an aggressive uh, approach at the crease. I mean, certainly, I think we have to on behalf of cricket. You know, we've got to look at what's coming and go after it. We want to we, we want to get into that in, in a serious way, but just before we do, yeah. cricket and sledging, politics and sledging, oh. some of the best sledging hand of hand. all time in politics. Question time. Yeah. against your opposition like are you willing you know at, at least out of politics right now to call out who, who are the best sledges other side of the aisle you know and moreover there's a phenomenon in cricket of like someone being a good bloke once you get to know him <laughs> <laughs> you know the white tough, one tough to play against on the field yeah. but good once you get yeah. to know him so so how are you as a sledger in in politics yeah. you you know yeah. when you when you go in hand to hand combat verbal combat <laughs> And who were the best on the other side as well? Who are the best you've seen? Who you look up to from a sledging perspective? Oh well, they're, they're, I mean, the the captain of that has to be Paul Keating. Yeah, uh, he was had a spectacular wit. Um, I didn't see those heights in the chamber I was in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, look, no, everyone everyone had a fair share. There was a, a general approach of um, you know, if an opposition could make you look incompetent, you know, or corrupt. And ideally, both then they're, they're having a great day, mm. you know. So, you it, there's fun, but you also have to be prepared for for battle because there's a contest of ideas, and you know they're always looking for chinks in your armor. Mm. Um, but no, look, I I always held it reasonably lightly, and um, you know, one particular question time, I had fun where I sort of accused the opposition right before the election that you know they thought that they were going to win and they were going to roll over the top of us and. Um, I said, not only are you not going to win seats, but we're coming for your seats. And anyway, it was somehow kind of went a bit viral. And uh, because my, my troops, they were excited that Parliament was almost over, we're almost at the election, and they all jumped up and roared, and the opposition are there looking quite dumbstruck. Uh-huh. Um, so that was, you know, out of a very limited pool of highlights, that was one. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh-huh. 
Yeah, no, I, 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 I certainly tried in my time in politics not to play uh, the person. Mm. And I think, you know, when I look at politics, that is what is a bit disillusioning um, to a lot of people. It's that, that personal, partisan, and, you know, I certainly tried to go for policy and, and argue that. Um, so, I mean, others can judge, yeah, judge on that. But, no, I don't think – no one stood out in my parliament as a sledge. I mean, you know, Luke Foley was pretty, was pretty good at it. Mm. Um, but all – you know, my sense there was a, a reasonably good spirit mm. um, in the parliament. I've got to tell you, it would be one of the easiest jobs in the world, Mike, to – try and prove that great cricketers were corrupt. Anyone you played with, <laughs> ethically, morally, financially. <laughs> like A constant theme. Well, well, the opposition had fun with that. <laughs> and those are just the guys you play with. Um, the state of Australian cricket, Mike, obviously you're, 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 the, you're, you're the big dog at CA. Uh, in the last five years, Australia have lost two test captains, one to cheating, one to sexting. Uh, there was an ethics review. Um Kerry Stokes wanted to take CA to court. Um, Stuart McGill got kidnapped. Um, but we won everything. So how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, I think, um, you know, like, like anything, there are, there are highlights and lowlights. Um, but I think uh, success on the field is one thing, but I also think, you know, it's how you do it and who you are is just as important. And, you know, when I look at this team and I look at Pat Cummins' leadership, I think he is – role modelling, you know, exactly what we our young kids should be looking for in role models. Um, I mean, I love the fact that he came back from India uh, because his mum was dying. Mm. Um, you know, think of captains of industry, think of political leaders, you know, think of, you know, sports leaders of national teams. Like that, the overwhelming sense would be you have a responsibility to keep going. Um, you have an overwhelming sense, in my view, to be the best person you can. And being the best person um, should trump that. And going back to be with his mum was an incredibly powerful moment. You know, I hope every kid in Australia saw that. Um, so it shows, yeah, that matters. Cricket matters. It matters a lot. And representing your country matters. But there comes times that other things do. And I think what he showed um, in that was the sort of role modelling you want. So, yeah, we've seen examples where there's been failure. Uh, you know, I also think, you know, all of those people that are critical, I mean, everyone fails. I mean, I fall short regularly. Um, you know, we all have our shortcomings. Um, so everyone should be afforded the chance to learn from those. Everyone should be afforded redemption. And, you know, I think we've seen that. And, and this team currently and the women's team, I mean, mm. two incredible teams that I think are providing not only uh, showing incredible success on the field but also kind of role modelling um, to, to our generations, which is important because cricket, as you know, is much more than just a game and it's a big part of Australia's DNA. So I think when cricket's going well and some of those role models are – having an impact, I think it's having a big impact across the country. Mm. I mean, I just want to pick up on the on the Pat Cummins thing, and I'm not sure where you um, arrived in this situation, but I believe that he and his team, not that he said this, um, mm -hmm. they, they define themselves in many ways in um, opposition to those who came before. I mean, you talked about, uh, you know, you put a lens over your political um, life as being more about policy than being about, partisan sledging you know you, you could make an analogy between that and the way Australian cricket has been played in the past to the way it's been played now you know Pat Cummins is about um, he's about the team he doesn't really talk about the opposition or to the opposition the team doesn't really seem to do that and it runs in opposition to the way a lot of our heroes played the game a little bit more combative a, li uh, combative, a little bit more hostile does Cricket Australia give thought as to how it can continue to seed the Pat Cummins way of playing cricket across the nation? Because it, to me, it will only take a couple of losses before those old forces start to go, no, we need to get harder again. You know, we need to start playing the old Aussie way. <laughs> yeah, and look, it's, and it's real. I mean, yeah, I mean, I grew up watching Alan Border and mm. I, <clears throat> I loved it. I mean, as a left-hander, I loved his batting. Yeah. Mm. Um, just, he was always so uh, gritty and, you know, up for the fight and the battle. You know, similar to Steve Waugh. Um, 
yeah, but it was also known as Captain Grumpy, and he was tough and relentless. And you know, with, with the teams he had, he probably had to be. You know, it was a tough time for Australian cricket, and he achieved some remarkable results. Um, but look, I don't, I don't necessarily think that you want to say this is exactly the way it should be. You know, I think there's when you're looking at captaincy, there's a whole range of things that go into it. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of values and approaches and understanding track record. I mean, there's a whole kind of matrix of consideration which you should do for any leader in kind of any organisation. Um, but no, this to me, um, what we can't underestimate, what what connects into um, kids and generations, inspires them to play, is that that personal connection, and you you, you can't sort of shape that or define that, you you either have it or you don't. And I mean, every Australian captain will. Um, but I think this is a very special period. You know, I, I, I look at Pat Cummins and I think that, you know, I've worked in all different spheres. I've seen all types of leaders in all types of circumstances. And he, he stands right at the top. And I don't think anyone would say that Pat Cummins isn't tough. Mm-mm. I think he's shown incredible toughness and, and sometimes under the greatest pressure, you know, both off the field and on the field. Mm. And, I, you know, I think that we, in many respects, Australian cricket, underestimate um, the character he is, the significant leader he is, um, and what a wonderful opportunity he is for cricket. Um, the fixtures for the Australian summer came out uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, yeah. um, today's Wednesday as we're recording this. Um, is it today Wednesday? Yep. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Yep. Today. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so India is obviously in the men. India coming out here five Test matches, first time in a long time it's been yep. five Test that series. Can you put in context the value of that, Mike? Like the value of that for Australian cricket that India are out here for five Test matches, and in the context of what would it mean if India stopped coming out here? Well, I mean, it's the the biggest cricket community in the world. Yeah, you know, so I mean, oh, it's going to be awesome! Like the colour, the vibrancy, the yeah. energy, great, great men's team as well. The last couple of years, beating us out here, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm just talking about like, um, yeah, the the actual value yeah, economically, I suppose. Yeah, and it's, it, uh, I mean, financially, it's significant. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's um, undoubtedly the most significant tour. Yeah, and you know that plays out in different ways. I mean the number of people that watch it mm. sort of back in India. Mm. Um, from state government's point of view, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, and we've kind of liaising with state governments. Right. That, because many of the senior leaders across the world, Indian leaders, are, are coming and uh, companies are kind of taking advantage of that. So there's conferences, there's mm. leadership gathering. I mean, it's it's it will be huge. Mm. Um, Is it, it bigger than the Ashes? Uh, yeah, in that w- sense, yeah, yeah, it will yeah, be in that yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ashes is obviously um, huge as well, mm. but no, th- this will be, and I, and I think it's also a point in time. I mean, India have beaten us twice in a row at right. home. Um, you've got this team, which is the World Test Championship, and you know, arguably uh, the most successful twelve months Australians teams almost been through in terms of the trophies and the various successes they've had. So y- you've got a a combination and you know what we saw in the ashes last year was and and the world cup you know this heightened interest from the australian cricket fan Mm. so there's there's huge anticipation um the commercials are significant you know the bilateral opportunities between australia and india and the business opportunities you know it's hard to imagine event and you know when you kind of think about other sports you know it's it's there's a lot to like about other sports but this is quite unique to cricket and you know this summer coming up, it's um, it is going to be, I think, one of the most anticipated summers we've ever had. Mm. Mm. Yeah. When um, Cricket Australia announces that Perth is the first test, to what extent is that driven by the fact that we'd like to go upstairs to the Indian yeah. bats and yeah. and and I- intimidate them with hostile bowling? <laughs> well, there's a, a range, um, a range of things that go into deciding it. But w- uh, one thing is like, uh, <laughs> getting it through the chest, basically. Yeah. Um, it, to, to what extent is 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 it wanting to get off to a good start yeah. uh, on a on a uh, you know pitch conducive to the way we play? Well, look, I mean, I've I've seen India play very well on those set those wickets, so <laughs> I, I, I think. Um, you know what we want to do with the venues, and that there's the the moving around. You know, to me, is something that that needs to stop. We need to kind of lock in, mm-hmm. so so everyone knows. You know, what test, what 
effective time. I mean, it can shift a little mm-hmm. bit depending on the sum. But, you know, that enables state governments to anchor it, enables them to invest in it, to put promotion around it. It becomes part of their calendar. Um, and fans as well. You know, wh- wh- where's it going to be? Like, you know, this, this time of year, that's where it's going to be. And, uh, you know, so I think that that surety. So, you know, Perth, I mean, it, it did well. I mean, there was a record sort of crowd versus Pakistan over in Perth. Mm-hmm. You know, it's coming back. I mean, obviously, they've had unbelievable Big Bash success and um, you want to see that sort of continue with the, the Test cricket. And, and I think you'll see that. I think it'll be a, a cracking start to the summer. Is, uh, is, is Mr Modi supposed to come out? I suppose he's got the general election this year. Is he, is he going to come out? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't haven't checked with him. Maybe I'll mm. just well, I haven't texted him. him. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. you, but you, you, um, you met him oh, ten years ago now when you when you were premier. Yeah, no, I'd, he well, came to Sydney, right? He did. Yeah, yeah. No, I did. I um, engaged with him, and yeah, he wanted me to go back to his Gujarat um, conference. There's a big sort of business conference once a year, uh-huh. and, I, and so I went to that as um, as New South Wales premier. And no, I just saw him at, at the um, the one day final. Ah, uh, right, and. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought that... Don't yeah. talk too much about that because we'll lose more subscribers. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's what, that's what happens. So oh, no, keep, it, just keep it positive. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> wow. But, but um, uh, no, no, and I saw him mm. and, I, and I, you know, I didn't think he would remember from past on. Yeah, but, right. But, but he did. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, no, so look, he he's obviously uh, an impressive leader on the global stage. Right. And... You know, it would be fantastic if it came across. I mean, yeah. I think the the event um, would be significant. I don't think you'd see a repeat of what happened um, <laughs> with Albo. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> on the, uh, on the, on the Batmobile. Bat- 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 no, Batmobile? Bat- Mike think- Baird and, and Modi on the Batmobile well, no, around no, the SCG? No, well, I'm, I'm thinking, would you have the PM? And I don't, yeah. I'm not sure whether Bay 13 would be cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean that's not that that's nothing personal against Alvo. Um, I just think that's the no, no, Australian no. way. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. yeah. <laughs> Who would it take? Uh maybe a Dermot Brereton or something. Um <laughs> anyway, uh Well maybe maybe Dermot and Bob Hawk. Dermot, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe that would be all right. Oh, Bob Hawk we had. But um <laughs> where, where I want to talk about um in India a little bit as it relates to your role. Like um to, so starting with the with our experience, like we're, we're covering the IPL now, mm. for example, it's fourth year in a row we've done it. Um, it's not unusual, and we, we enjoyed we enjoy doing it and learning more about it. Um, not unusual for um, segments of our, let's call it Anglosphere uh, audience to suggest that we are doing it, you know, cynically and, and purely to kowtow to the Indian dollar. Um, it's not our view, but that sentiment does exist. And I do note that it exists uh, in, in Australia and England when it comes to all matters India quite a lot of the time when we're talking about cricket. Um, I think a lot of us have been raised on the presumption that Australia and, in, uh, and England uh, somewhat steward the direction of the game uh, when that's not really the case anymore. Um, what, what do you observe to be uh, India India's vision for the game when you – work with the BCCI or, or, the, or the powers that be? I'm sure it's difficult to generalise, but uh, what, what what is the vision for the game as you observe it? Yeah, well, I mean, India's a big part. And I, I mean, I, and I start uh, with a, a fundamental premise, and that is I, I just love India. Mm. Like, like India is an incredible country. Um, history, culture, vibrancy, ambition. Um, you know, even um, Prime Minister Modi, I mean, he's had a, a, a vision to take hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Um, simple things like providing bank accounts um, to give people more opportunity, surety, a capacity to save and um, start moving ahead. Like I, I think um, the opportunities we have in trade, in investment, in partnership uh, with India is incredible. Um, you know, when I was in public life, there was regular visits because, I mean, it's a long-term sort of opportunity but we have this deep connection between us history um cricket plays a, an essential role in that so I, I i start with sort of great admiration for india um huge opportunities and joint opportunities and yeah i, I think we can become sort of focused well there's you know a lot of money um a lot of the population kind of sits in india so so that kind of leads to this power imbalance you know i, I just think that you look at it another way, that 
what an incredible opportunity India is. You know, aren't we lucky in cricket to have that sort of population so passionate and fervent about a game we love? And so how do we work together? And I think if you if you do that way, you've got much more chance to kind of working in partnership. And that, for me, is genuine and hopefully um, they will see as real. So, yeah, you know, and, and the same thing. I mean, yes, Australia needs to lead, as does England, as does India. I mean, as, as the collection, you, you, people will talk about those three. But you can't forget the other member countries. You know, we're not, we're not just looking after ourselves. I mean, this is about growing the game for the long term and across the world. And there's over 100 associate member countries. The existing member countries, um, how do we include and um, bring them along? So, you know, I, I think, you know, that's the way we need to think. If we're going to maximise the opportunities that are before the game, I mean, look at the US, the US sports market. I mean, the $250 billion is a conservative estimate of what, what it's worth. Now, it's not just about how do we get part of that and grab part of that revenue. In my mind, how do we access that, give opportunities to our players, young boys and girls, but how do we then bring that back and continue to grow Cricket, you know, community cricket, grassroots cricket. Um, so growing the game globally, accessing opportunities together, but making sure we never lose sight of growing our local game and community cricket. I think that's it, the way I would sort of march forward. So part of that is the, is the relationship with India and trying to do things together, um, but in a way that's respectful and about that long-term aim of growing the, the game around the world. You, can I just say, just follow yep. up on that? He goes, th- there will be a lot of people listening to this and watching this, I- I'd suggest particularly in Australia and England, but it could, could be further than that, who would note what you say about uh, the the passion of Indian fans and the potential of power imbalance. Uh, and if if India exerts such a disproportionate amount of power on the game, which includes... Um, Receiving a lot of the I, I um, we've got the ICC disbursements, uh, and people noting that the game seems to be trending towards more short form white ball um, T Twenty competitions. That there is a um, degradation of Test cricket seen in the lack of commercial viability for all nations, barring three, to play. That while there might be certain growth of the game in real in real terms, that that growth and development is not matching the expectations or the desires of Australian and English fans, for example, who would like to see growth in test cricket or red ball cricket. They see degradation of that stuff. So how what, what do you say to those people who take that view, who might take that view that it's not all roses in cricket and that there's a lot of international teams that do seem to be in their own state of degradation as well as the wealth concentrates on domestic franchise tournament as run by Indian franchise owners. Yeah, and look, I, I, I would say they're not mutually exclusive. You know, I think I, I think they can operate together. Mm-hmm. And I think that as, as administrators, there is a responsibility um, to protect the essence of the game, the history of the game, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's a legacy of any administrator. Um, at the same time, you can't ignore... The trends and the opportunities, yeah. and you know the the numbers tell an incredible story. Um, I mean, Test cricket in the past few years has pretty much been stable in terms of viewership. T Twenty has been growing exponentially, yeah. and One Day Internationals have been falling. Yeah. So you 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 have three formats now. The the ODIs to me, what the research shows. That, two parts to it, and that was a lack of context to the matches, mm. if you think mm. about it, and many matches that are lopsided. So the more competitive it is, the more context it is, the more interest it is. And at T20, you have both of those, mm. and it's a shorter format. Um, test cricket can have both, um, but I think the onus on us is to shore up, and you would have seen India announce sort of changes in their payments to yeah. tests yeah you yeah. know and that's uh, you having know, to play Ranji trophy as well to, yeah, to and, and, start, yeah and and we've kind of spoken about that and you know they've kind of leapt on that and and pursuing it and we need to think about that more broadly across member c- countries now not every associate member country is going to be able to play test cricket mm. um but you know those that are playing right now 
we have to look to why to, to strengthen them and to maintain it. Um, I mean, look at what a lot of the test players, well, they'll tell you that that is the format. Mm -hmm. um, for those that, that have grown up on it, um, like me, mm. there is nothing better than minute one to last minute of a test match and the ups and downs and every life lesson that is shown and comes through that um, period. And it's shown it still does have a strong audience. So it's a matter of being creative <coughs> in maintaining it. It's a matter of sort of also embracing um, some of those other opportunities. And, you know, T20 is incredible the way it's going. But, uh, yeah, we also do have to stand up. We, we can't be in a position that national cricket, international cricket, is not given primacy. Mm. You know, it, it, we have to make sure that that is maintained and we have to work with member countries to do that. We have to look at things like windows. We've got to give context to, to the contests. Um, so all of those things can be done. I mean, it's tough because there's different priorities. But, you know, the right sort of leadership, with the right sort of mindset across that group, you know, I think it can. And, you know, my, my interaction uh, with the BCCI and, you know, Jay is obviously the, the secretary there, is, has only been positive. And, you know, I, I do think that they do um, think very strongly about maintaining the game and they've got a an ob obligation responsibility with all that's come to them through cricket, you know, to make sure they play. I mean, they do regular tours. Mm. Um, they, they make sure that they give back. So, uh, yes, they can do more, but, you know, my sense is there's the, the right approach. I think it's really, it's really difficult, I think, for <clears> – <throat> I'm going to say Australian specifically, and the reason I say it is because, like, the IPL is awesome. And it's so difficult to watch in Australia just purely from a time zone sense, right? I never watched it until about four or five years ago. And um, and then you watch it and you go, oh, no, these are all the best players playing uh, in front of packed houses every night. The energy, the quality of the cricket is outstanding. The grounds are the right size. So there's the right number of sixes and fours and close finishes. And <clears throat> But I think the pinnacle of the sport in Australia is the Ashes. <laughs> And that's a test series. And the reason I say that is the pinnacle is because I don't think yet that we can replicate the feeling of what the Ashes means to a fan. Mm -hmm. You know, like we just feel it so culturally because we've got friends and ancestry in the UK and vice versa to them. We hate them. They had us. But we all love each other at the same time. And, and the legacy and the history of test matches is so important to us. It's really important to people of our demographic, of our generations, mm -hmm. we can pair us all together. I think young people, though, probably – like short form cricket mm -hmm. because of TikTok brain where you need uh, you know sugar hits all the time. So then you cup I couple that with um the IPL rights being sold for six billion dollars two years ago, whatever. You've got Avram Glazer of the Glazer family owned United part of that, um, trying to get the sport into the US. You've got Makesh Ambani, one of the richest men in the world, pushing it in a certain direction as well. And so we're trying to, I think, it feels like we're trying to get a foot in both camp where like we've got to keep our test matches going because that is really important to us. And also the money that we get from the board of Gavaska trophy, right? And then we've also got the big bash. Now, what I can't get my head around with the big bash is that uh, this year now, uh, this summer coming up will be the second year of two summer, uh, of three summers where there's no nationally contracted players playing in the big bash. And I can't think of another country that has that doesn't have their best players playing in their domestic T20 competition. So I guess I'm trying to ask is why? Why 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 is that? Because we we're, we're trying to play our big bash and our test matches on at the same time and there's just not that many well-known recognizable players for everyone to share. Yeah. Thoughts? No thoughts. <laughs> no no it's fair. And, and and I think that um you know the fans have asked for that and are responding to that, mm -hmm. you know, and I think there's been a real effort in the like last season to to do that, you know, to to make available, you know, yeah. the, the best possible players, and actually in the next two years, the, the they they will be available, mm -hmm. you know, obviously not for the full competition, right. but but there will be kind of uh, opportunities post post the series. Um, so look, yeah, I mean, we we have to um, think about it and respond to it. You know, there's there's no doubt because I, I'm strongly the view you you you've got to have the best product. I mean, this is a competition entertainment across all types of different varieties and if you're not putting your best product there that's going to have an impact mm. i mean you know we we love um you know watching our teams play and there's lots of little fans but you know having you know there's many australian players as possible um 
at least available for part of the season, I mean, think has to be a, a key driver, you know, for all the reasons that, that you articulated. Mm. So that, that is something that we need to um, spend more time on. But the next couple of years, I think, you know, the, the fans will have both. You know, yeah. they'll, they'll have these incredible series. And, and I agree with you. I mean, the Ashes, with all of the history, you just can't top of it. And, yeah. you know, there's um, a lot of, um, you know, it goes all the way back to convict days. Probably we have this yeah. DNA about us yeah. that that beating, you know, our English friends is hard to beat in terms of a, a pinnacle. But, you know, I, I think that the Indian rivalry and competition is building and building. Yeah, you know, definitely. As, absolutely. as, as, is, yeah. as is the so history. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I just think about, like, the Big Bash, like, how good that that – competition could be if it was let's say it went for seven eight weeks and you've got cummins smith stark head marsh you know all the guys playing and then it's all of a sudden every night there's a guys that i want to watch play cricket you know i yeah. i find i find this is just anecdotal because it's just me but i find it difficult to watch a full day of test cricket and then also see the games on at night against basically i'm basically i feel like i'm watching the marsh cup i feel you know with respect to um you know the very good state players who I've just disrespected. Uh, <laughs> mm, mm. But do, do you know what I mean? I just I look at the big bash and like, it could be so good if our best players were playing in it, but they yeah, but they can't do both. Yeah, and, and well, and, and they, they can't do both. But that's yeah, we, we do have to think about that that longer term. No right, 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 right. But but I am like the next two summers there will be lots um, that that'll be playing. You you saw that recently. Um, you know, Steve Smith came back, and you know yeah. those centuries and yeah. Yeah, you know, the crowds going crazy. I mean, that's that they, they'd love to see it, like yeah. we all would. Yeah, you know. So, you know, we 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 definitely have to wrestle with that. Can yeah. I try and like tie that together a little bit? Uh, the reason why we're talking about domestic franchise cricket and the reason it's important is we're we're looking at the IPL. We can see the trends: six billion dollars. Every country needs a really strong asset as its domestic franchise tournament. I want to ask you about private equity in a second. I know you got Morgan Stanley in last year to have a look at stuff and whatever, um, and so. That's probably partly why we're talking about, you know, the question of why Australia cannot have its best players play in its domestic franchise tournament. Until it does, it's always going to be second, third, fourth, sixth tier when you talk to some players. And we say we can't have them play at the same time as the tests are on. Part of the reason why that's the case is because Australian cricket really happens for about five or six weeks a year. You have a three to four week shoulder se- uh, peak season and three to four weeks either side, sorry, five to six weeks of shoulder stuff. And then the other competitor on the other side of that is footy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Footy takes up the conversation all the way through to almost November and then it'll kick off in February again. So, you know, a- AFL and rugby league, you know, almost seem to be the other um, impediment to a, a cricket season um, in full shape. If you had a cricket season that was able to go- run for longer in Australia, you could run a big bash and a test series separately and then all players can play, just as it is in England, for example. So... How do you strategically manage that? You know, if you accept domestic franchise competitions are important, but that Australia can only fit its cricket into like, you know, a peak season of three to five mm. weeks mm. because of footy. What do you? What sort of thing? What sort of levers is Cricket Australia pulling to try and create more space so that we can do all of these things? Yeah, and and yeah, we have to, um, you know, be creative around that. I mean, I th- I think for for the cricket fans, I mean, you've you've got that season, but obviously there's tours that you know they can yeah. watch cricket throughout mm. the year in yeah. often mm. in different um places you know mm. men and women um playing everywhere now um and you know you would have seen in the uh, recent announcement um that you know since i think 1948 49 you know the the women going back to play at the mcg mm. you know 75 odd years that that's going to be you know, a huge event. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. In mm. it. So day night as well. Day night. Yeah, that's mm. awesome. Pink ball. So yeah. that that yeah. that that's a new addition. You know, yeah. to the calendar domestically. Mm. Um, that that'll be very special. But no, look, I I, I think that um, we we have a position that is reasonable at the moment, but it can be better. Mm. And we looking at the the schedule and the timing. Um, we we have to seriously think about it. If you you look at it, the the trunk outside the IPL, most competitions are shorter yes. than the Big Bash, and yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. the shorter, you know, does give you a capacity to attract more players, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and and it, you're not taking as much schedule and window, mm. so that's something we have to think about. Um, you know, it obviously is a staple for the summer from about mid December till the mm. end of January. There's there's regular games, great for broadcasters, yep. great for fans, wall to wall, but but there is a balance. 
you mm. know, and I, and I think we need to kind of think through that. I, you know, I, I think that, I mean, there's incredible players that play the Big Bash. I mean, and you see the emergence of talent. I mean, you know, Jake Fraser McGurk has kind of burst onto the scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ollie Davies is, you know, they they're kind of given. He's from New South Wales as well, so he's probably he's, probably, he's, probably, he's probably next cab off. Probably the pretty close, I would have thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's, Maggie Green, Maggie well, Green. I'm, I'm not a selector. Yeah. Um, oh, no, you're I a bagger, though. I am from New South Wales. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I was oh. born in Victoria, so, like, I don't, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I keep We've got to stick to you. Quiet. I keep yeah, yeah, yeah. quiet. Been, um, <laughs> Is there a lot of AFL chat at Jollymon as well, by the way? Like, you, you're, you're here in Melbourne today. We're obviously from Sydney as yeah. well, but, like, yes. you go into Jollymon, is it just, you know, how about, how about the Cats last week? <laughs> you know, and, and how's your AFL chat? Yeah, no, there's no, it's it's not great. I mean, a Giants. I'm a Giants fan. Okay, says and, it all. Um, Top of the table, though. Yeah. Well, and they they look good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Name five players. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It could be the year. Yeah, yeah. Alex Carey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, speaking of like um, talent in the Big Bash, Mike, like. Um, I look at the PSL P and the and the Aussie guys that have played in the PSL that have spoken to us. They say it's awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. obviously cricket back in the region as well. Test matches, which people are really excited about in Pakistan. Obviously, not allowed to play in the IPL for for fairly obvious reasons. Indian players not allowed to play outside of India. Um, I just wonder, like uh, a couple of years ago, actually, there was I was at Rizwan, Baba Azam, and uh, Shaheen were all scheduled to play in the Big Bash when they pulled out. I just wondered, like, if there's some sort of allegiance possible to get like the Pakistani players you know, shit, coming into the big bash. I just think of ways to, to bring like to strengthen that competition that mm-hmm. maybe the, if the Australian players cannot, because uh, Pakistan, obviously they came out here and gave us three great test matches really this summer, yeah. but fundamentally it doesn't seem viable longer term for Pakistan, unfortunately to play test cricket. So I'm just wondering like, and they've got such a white ball team. Is, is that a way to strengthen the big bash? Some sort of allegiance with uh, oh, no, no, all of them. I mean, like I think we should be, Thinking creatively with the ECB, you know, with Pakistan, with Bangladesh. Yeah, I mean, we 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 should be absolutely looking for for partnerships, an opportunity to kind of connect in, yeah, and, and yeah, open yeah. those audiences mm. to teams and um, players uh, through the big way. So, so yes, and there and there are discussions, you know, really a, okay a, yeah. across all of those. Yeah, and you know, it's something that I think it, it creates um, a much stronger league. You know, if you are connected in, you've got mm-hmm. greater player pool, um, but also broader audiences. You know, yeah. that's, that, that's what you want. I mean, you yeah. know, sponsors are going to be interested, the, the wider the, the audience Absolutely, base. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but it also just generates um, more followership of the league and, you know, that's something that we need to do. So strategic partnerships should be part of it, yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the 100 has been subject to... Um, you know, to, to private equity proposals, um, the the MLC in the US is uh, has what four out of the six franchises owned by Indian mm. franchises. That's always been discussed in Australia whether uh, th- those kinds of franchises will come and knock on the door for, for with the BBL as well. Um, I, I read last year that you you got Morgan Stanley to come and have a look, put every, putting everything on the table mm-hmm. in terms of private equity in mm-hmm. cricket. Uh, what what, what became of that when everything was on the table what did you see mm. uh w- what's your position on that entire idea as it relates to cricket in australia yeah i think you, you have to be curious and if, if if you're not curious um you're not going to grow you're going to miss opportunities mm. and you know for us i mean what is going on across the world of sport with private equity is fascinating and it's it's growing exponentially so the question is, is that something we should consider? You, you mm. start with the why. You know, so why would we need private equity? Mm. You know, there's been examples of financial challenge or distress has kind of brought in capital to kind of bridge a way out of it. You know, we're not in that position. I mean, we're still kind of working through the final elements across cricket of the COVID pain. You know, this is the last kind of period following this tour as we obviously go into a much stronger position in the next couple of years. Um, so it's not it, we don't have a financial imperative, um, but what we're curious about is well, what could it bring? And you know, it's pretty clear if you if you look at private equity, they have a laser like focus, great capability um, on sort of generating revenue and unearthing opportunities and assets and uh, present, presentable assets in a whole range of different formats, but particularly digitally um, that we need to go up the curve on. So, I mean, certainly there is 
capability in, in Cricket Australia, but, you know, what we saw with the, the focus, the private equity firms and the, the partnerships and the skill sets that were applied to it, you know, that was mainly the main benefit of, of a private equity partner. And we can do that ourselves. Mm. So, so the decision was, well, we, we don't need that capital. That gives away flexibility mm. in an already constrained environment. Um, but what we can do is kind of double down in terms of the various approaches we've seen from other sports and mm. private equity um, to help us grow the game. So you got them in, and the, they gave you some insights. You went, "Thanks, we can do that ourselves." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's free well, no, discovery. It was, a, it, it, it was a lot of people involved, lots of um, consideration, and, and it was important. It was it was very instructive, and you know, you you look at the private equity firms, you look at the various sports, and you know, there's a learning. And mm. you know, as as administrators, you've got to, you've got to learn from those that are doing things well and greatly. And, you know, what can you import, what you can't. So, you know, I, it, it's certainly something you wouldn't um, sort of rush into. And, you know, not every sport has gone down it. You know, we, we're certainly not uh, be rushing into anything. But the discipline, the, the approach, the focus, that's something that we're going gangbusters on. You mentioned, um, sorry, you, you, you mentioned before, would you say the, the, the value of the US sports market, 250 billion? Yeah, that's conservative. My number. God, okay. Mm. Um, wouldn't want a slice of that myself. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> MLC. Well, you probably will, aren't you? Mm. You're going over. I mean, that's, <laughs> they haven't announced that, but it's yeah. all good. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's it's not. That's not, done. No, <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> no, 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 we've done some people. It's yeah. exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, we're meant to get exclusives from him. <laughs> we're bad. I think he's going to make the news. Yeah. Mike Baird reveals that great cricket is going to be in America. Anyway, um, you know, like it feels like a, a cricket's cricket inverted commas has had a crack at uh, the US market a couple of times, um, but now feels like more, maybe more so than ever. Obviously, mm. cricket's going to be in the Olympics in LA in 2028. Hopefully, it continues in Brisbane in 2032. Um, there was a census in the US in 2020, and of the people that identify as uh, one race. Indians now have passed Chinese. There's more Indian people than Chinese people in the US. So there's already this existing market you would suspect of cricket-loving fans. You couple that with uh, the IPL owners, only four of the six teams. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you think that cricket's going to be able to make it in the US? Because it's a competitive market. And also, why do they want that other than just money? Or is it just money? No, I mean, it's... it's the biggest sports market in the world. Yeah, so okay. you, yeah. if, if a sport can survive and thrive there, there's huge opportunities. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I mean, the numbers that I've seen show that it's just under 40 million in terms of those living in the US with a Southeast Asian right. percent. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a strong it's a lot of people. Basis. Well, it's more than Australia already. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you, you have that um, already uh, in place in country. So, you know, I, I think there's... You know, a very significant chance of success. And w what you're talking about with the Olympics, I mean, that's going to elevate it significantly. Um, 28, and then we've obviously got Brisbane, and the, and mm. the expectation is that India will have it in 36. So you, there's almost 12 years of cricket in the Olympics at a minimum, and so the anchoring that in the the US market and and where that starts with a World Cup that's that's yeah. going there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think. You know the NRL, you know, should be commended for being bold and you know taking some initiative into that market. But we actually have an underlying opportunity of people who are living in America that love to play cricket, love to watch cricket, want to support cricket. Um, so the very reason they're there, well, we have to maximise you know that and and grow that because. It's the biggest sports market in the world. Yeah. And, you know why would we not want to be there? Mm. And it's the fastest growing game in the world. Um, being in the US, I think it's going to be exciting. And I, and I think the World Cup, together with the great uh, cricketer visitors, is, is really going to boost it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, a, it's the biggest sports market and the second biggest sport. It just feels like it's there's something there for it. But yes. Are you going to go to the World Cup? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. I'd love to. I'd yeah. love to. I mean, um, you know, if, if, if I can, I'd love to go on the program. But um, I'll see. I'd love to go. Mm. Yeah. The, that that India Pakistan game in New York. I know mean, it's on oh. it's on Long Island, but still, I mean that could be anything. 
Yeah, it could well, be I, terrible, but <laughs> well, no, no. I, yeah, I, I grew up in New York, so it's um, oh, amazing. Yeah, so I've I've, I've got to go back. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I actually went to Yankee Stadium before I went to the SCG. Yeah, of course and, you know. Um, now we're talking. I, <laughs> <laughs> so they, I mean, the Yankees. I can I can name their nineteen seventy eight. Uh, World Series, good side that year. Starting, yeah, side. It was yeah. a very good side. Um, <laughs> are you a Yankees fan? No, no, I've, I've been once, so yeah. yeah. Oh right, <laughs> big fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. big fan. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a big dog knock around for the yeah. Yankees in 1978. Yeah, like, who's a name we'd we'd know? You, you wouldn't, uh, Reggie Jackson. Oh, oh yeah, Reggie yeah, Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he was uh, an absolute legend. Not to be confused with Shoeless Joe Jackson as well. No, no, it wasn't Shoeless Joe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who else is my uh, Craig Nettles? Was a favourite. That sounds like very second grade. Yeah. No, no, Craig Nettles, yeah. third baseman. Bucky yeah. Dent. Um, <gasps> Bucky Dent. Chris Rogers. Bucky Dent, he, yeah. in a, in a tiebreaker game with the Red Sox, he hit yeah. a, hardly hit home runs and hit a home run oh, over, nice. the, over the green monster yeah. in Boston. Oh. And that's – so he's – Bucky yeah. Dent is forever in my mouth. I watched it live. You know, that's awesome. I just uh, – was exciting. Anyway, um, it was and, – and Louisiana Lightning went uh, – Ron Guidry went 25 and 3. Okay. That season, and uh, that's in terms of pitching terms, that's about as dominant as you can. Okay, you can right, ever right, right. So, anyway, um, long story that there is a <laughs> there is a great pulse um, to New York in sport. It is yeah. the most incredible city. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to it. to see, you know, my favorite sport, you know, come to my favorite city outside of uh, Australia is is pretty exciting. Yeah, and the India, I, 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 they're talking about that India Pakistan game being the most watched sporting event of all time. Really? Mm. You still follow the ba- still still follow the baseball? Ex-Olympics. Oh, okay. Do you yeah. still follow baseball? Yes. You, you should talk to Ian Chappell. One, one saw Ian Chappell checking the box scores of the MLB as an Australian player yeah. brought up his 100 once. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Ian <laughs> Chappell. Watching the Orioles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a uh, – I don't know whether I should tell this about Ian Chappell. I might tell it very quickly because he might Because like he, he was a ba- former baseballer. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. He um, So he went down to um, – my local club. So, and I didn't mention them in the club cricket. So, I played for the Harbord Hogs. Uh huh. Well, when they're oh, sorry for only mentioning Camera, it sounds like you've uh, been to a couple well, no, of the Harbord Hogs, so which the is Hogs. the Harbord Bowling Club cricket yeah. club, right? Harbord Bowling Cricket Club. Um, and yeah, when they're desperate, 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 I played games. And so this year, I played one, none for 20. Three, I think, off my over, and can I check that on play HQ <laughs> or seven? I think that's what I got. <laughs> one for twenty three uh, off one over. No, no, none for none for twenty three. Right. One over, okay. Yeah, no. yeah. So, but I feel yeah. part of the team um, yeah. because yeah. they yeah. just yeah. won the premiership. They just won the yeah. premiership. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. um, but no, oh, last, congrats. <laughs> yeah, to the Hogs. Yeah, I'm glad the Hogs are on this. Yeah. Um, but then last season, Ian Chappell came to, at the presentation night, ah. and and he's giving this his usual talk, and he's look, um, how do you put it? He's not flattering. Of cricket administrators and, and the board of cricket <laughs> that, Australia more generally, yeah. and and he Chappelle, yeah, yeah, well, and he, and he picked me out. He said, "Oh, you know, Mike Baird, look, he, he may well have been a great premier. I don't know. He, he may well have been a great sort of banker. I don't know, um, but he, he doesn't know anything about cricket." And the hogs were up and up and about. So they, <laughs> yeah. they said, "Hang on, hang on, that's Beardy." Oh no, 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 no. I was Beardy, hoping they were backing him up. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's true. Oh, he's terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh no, no, oh, he's no. up for twenty three. <laughs> Pitch it up. No, I had a bit, no, the season before. I got a nineteen. <laughs> yeah, you know. So okay. maybe, but no, uh, it was. Um, <laughs> So that's that's Chappelle. He was quite surprised, I think, to find some support for a, an yeah. administrator. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Room. yeah, yeah. Uh, harsh, harsh segue from the US to Afghanistan. Um, <laughs> not unrelated, but uh, the Cricket Australia recently uh, cancelled a men's tour to Afghanistan. That was in the um, FTP, uh, and it has um, aroused a fair amount of um, negative sentiment from from certain like from different sections of the community. Um, and I've seen it globally as well, but like, I mean, what's what, why did why did Cricket Australia do that? Um, what's your position on it? Um, especially, I, th- I think people who there are a lot of people out there who who regard it as sort of morbidly cynical, uh, given that um, it it can appear at face value to be a convenient cancellation, uh, particularly in a scenario where you, where the Australian team does play against Afghanistan in ICC tournaments. I appreciate there are some. Fairly reasonable arguments for that, but I, I figured it would be good to ask you. Yeah, no, sure. Look, it, you know, it's um, it, it it's not an easy one, and it's and it's a wrestle. You know, this is this has been wrestled with, kind of at the board, and you know, there's a general sentiment that um, 
yeah, which which I agree with. Impossible, but agree with. And you know, trying to keep politics out of sport, you know, as much as you possibly can. There are individuals, there are connected causes, almost impossible to do. Mm. Um, but I, I, I get that. Yeah, you know, that's what a lot of people think. Um, in relation to this, though, the um, the implications and the circumstances uh, we've seen and heard about women in Afghanistan, it, it seems a very difficult thing to walk away from. So, you know, in a game that's, that promotes inclusivity and has got a strategic priority of trying to grow the women's game and support the women's game, well, this is a real claim. And, you know, I, I don't know whether uh, other boards have wrestled with it as, as much as we have, but, you know, we, we've made a determination it's not something that we want a walk away from. You know, there's, a, there's standards and values that, you know, at some point you come to a line. Now, you know, are we perfect? No. Are, are the things that we've done wrong? Absolutely. But is this something that, that we collectively think that we should be taking a stand on? And, and the answer has been yes. Now, you know, we've obviously liaised with government on that. I mean, you know, they've got sort of strong views but it also is dynamic, you know. So from my point of view, what, what we're looking for is actually action that, that women are going to be allowed to play sport again, you know, to participate in cricket again. And, you know, that's, that's what I've said to my counterpart in Afghanistan. We just need to see that there's progress. And if there is some progress, well, you know, let's, let's reconvene mm-hmm. um, in terms of the tool. So... Yeah, that's the position we've taken. You know, there's wide and varied views on it, but but I th- I think it's the right decision, and you know I also want to be able to try and influence you know with my counterpart in Afghanistan to say well you know please show us you know opportunities or the emergence and small developments even that we're actually starting to see progress uh, with women being able to play sport there. How far in advance do do we in commas, book these tours? Like so, so how how long ago was this t- to a plant for um, the first time? Well, yeah, before it was deferred, it's I think it's about three years, you know. So 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 it's a long time. Yeah, yeah. Know, in in the making. Yeah. So I guess like to be honest, I, I don't even know where I sit with it, Mike. Myself, you know, yeah. like we did a charity event for the LBW Trust last year in Sydney. Justin Lang was there as well. And the special guests were these two Afghani... Uh, yeah, Gana- I was there. Banafsha oh, yeah, and, yeah, you were there. Yeah, Banafsha of course you were. and Nilab. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, were you going to ask the question? Have you got no, 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 no. Oh, I just right. remember the names. So um, they were amazing. Just, they were fantastic. Yeah. The, sto- the story is a combination of incredible, abhorrent, you know, all of it. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing and scary and all of it. Um, so I can't reconcile a thing in my head of like, oh, no, we should be going to play there as much as you want to grow the game and all those things. So like then, then it becomes, I'm just thinking, of it, I'm thinking that it's out loud with you, I think. Yeah. But um, so then should we have played them in the world cup, you know, but that's different because the ICC have organized that. It's, there's, there's, there's clearly a difference between that and choosing to go there. And the bilateral, yeah. you know, and also Maxi batted really well. Yeah. It's got a double hundred. Um, well, I think that that's the, Best innings I've ever seen. <laughs> without, 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 without question. In any format. Sorry. Without question. So, so I guess I guess what I'm asking there is like, why why organise the tour in the first place? Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean that... Because you mentioned other boards haven't wrestled with it either. It just looks like they haven't organised anything. Yeah. Wouldn't it has, has, been better uh, not has to England, for instance, yeah. has yeah. England never gone there? I, I can't think they have. No, but mm. look, I think there's... Um, I, I, I'm not going to speak for, for the ECB, but right. you know, I, I, I would say there's sympathy for our position. You yeah, know, right. Would be my standing. But, it, I mean, if I went, if it was, and I don't know the date, mm. you know, on, on when it was actually put in the calendar, but my expectation was it may well have been before. Oh, uh, before events. the Taliban came back yeah. in. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, right. but regardless, um, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, okay. So, so that would that would be the I understand. The yeah, reason. Okay. Yeah. I reckon it makes sense. Yeah. But but yeah. but also look, it's it's. Um, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the the fact that we're playing in ICC events, well, not organised by us. Like I I understand people finding where you're trying to be too nuanced about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I guess that you know I, I would say you, you manage what you can manage, mm. and and certainly by latch is is totally within sort of our control. Right, yeah. And yeah. you know, so that's just, so that's where we've we've taken a stand. And yeah, you know, I've I, I will be engaging with the chair of Afghanistan every meeting and we'll be talking about it. So I'll be asking for the progress. And 
you know, the the tour and the opportunity to tour and play, you know, my hope that is taken, well, we really want to do that. So, you know, what can we do? You know, what's possible in the women's game? But, you know, it's also difficult for them. Um, you know, there's things that are in their control and things that aren't. But um, I certainly think it's the right thing to do. Mm. Yeah. Last, last one from me. This is a headline that came through in the summer, Mike, and I know I'm harking back to something we talked about earlier, but just finishing on this note. It just says, Baird, rich nations must share wealth to keep test cricket healthy. <laughs> <laughs> are, you laughing, are you laughing cynically at that? <laughs> like uh, it, uh, a novel, novel idea, I in my life would love to see that. I can wake up in the morning. I would love to see people share money to that effect. Yeah, um, I've I've studied at university and understand the realities of you know neo capitalism as well. Uh, it 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 flies the the idea of sharing wealth flies in the face of um, free market enterprise a lot of the time. Um, is there a scenario where rich nations will share appropriate amounts of wealth to keep Test cricket healthy? And are you Behind that, what's your position on that headline? Um, you know, the, and I could have started the interview with that, but I'll just keep it to the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the position mm. is is consistent. Like I, I think we we have to pull every lever, every lever possible, uh, to maintain the history, the legacy, and the primacy of Test cricket. You can't ignore the commercial realities, and that's where I said at the beginning, you can do both. Um, undoubtedly, part of the um, challenge for some countries is that you know they receive almost nothing for Test cricket, you know, whereas the white ball disparity is huge. Mm. You know, so trying to narrow that gap. I mean, that's a, that's a simple principle. Try and narrow that gap. Now, are countries prepared to to put into that? Well, I think they should be. And you know, from from our point of view, if I if I went across the Australian cricket system and said, look, do you think that we want to keep Test Test cricket? as strong as possible and a key feature of the game, I, I think it would be a, not unanimous, but it'd be a very, very strong position. Um, so that, all, that, that, that strong position is something as administrators we, we have to play. And, you know, sometimes that comes with a cost. Now, you know, you, you don't want to be in a position that you're holding something that's unsustainable. It is sustainable um, for particularly three countries. Um, but we've got to ask ourselves, well, to in, to maintain that, the more nations that are playing competitive test cricket, the better they are, you know, at our contest. The next two summers, oh, part of it's built up because of, you know, the West Indies of the Gabba. I mean, well, that was spectacular what we saw from them. And Pakistan, every match was competitive. I mean, they, they were almost in a position they could have won every match at mm-hmm. some point. Yeah. That, that, that sort of building... Um, the contest towards the ultimate test match against um, you know, in the next two summers, um, I think is essential. So, yes, you, you need to make windows available. Um, you need to make, I think, funding available. And, you know, that should be in the onus of those countries that have the most resources. Uh, well, we've probably been greedy with your time, Mike. Thanks so much for giving us your time. Thanks so much for coming uh, in to the studio. Uh, it, it's um, a, a privilege for us to be, to be able to sit with someone of, uh, of your level of influence. So very much appreciate it. Um, all the best for the rest of your time in Melbourne, some AFL chat, and um, <laughs> hopefully we catch you in New York uh, for, Yankee more, Stadium. For, for more of a baseball uh, education. Sounds like a date. No, thank you. It's a, it's a privilege uh, to be on the program. Congrats. Like... Um, what you guys have done for the game can't be underestimated. It's huge. So uh, thank you for your passion for the game. Thank you for taking us to a whole different market. Um, and, yeah, look forward to seeing you in New York. Well, don't don't forget the power of club cricket. You know, look how, look how far it can go. Totally can. Mm. And we won't be showing any profits. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs>